So we're going to start with a domain question here. And we have a P function and an F function here. The thing we need to watch out in the P function, there's actually two things. We have to make sure that we don't divide by zero and that X is not negative. If we're looking at just domain of F, well, that's polynomial, so it's all real numbers. Now, of course, this question doesn't just say what's domain of P and F, it asks more complicated questions. Let's start with the fraction P over F. So we'll first start by writing P over F. And that is P is on the top and F is on the bottom. And when you write a multi-story fraction, you really need to pay attention to what's actually on the top and the bottom. This would not be the same thing as if it was grouped up in this fashion. This would be a very different fraction if it was grouped like this. So it is important that you parenthesize the top to keep an order of operations. I recommend you don't simplify when you're trying to find the domain. So when finding domain, do not simplify. So let's go ahead and look at what's going on here and the potential things we need to watch out for. So we got division, we also have division. So here's one time I could be dividing. Here's the second time I could be dividing. So we gotta watch the divide by zero. So we'll start with the top. I'm gonna look for bad X's here. So we're looking for bad X's and then we're gonna intentionally set them to zero. So I got square root X equals zero. So when is this going to equal zero? All right, so let's go ahead and get into that. This is actually a very easy algebra problem once you have it set up, just square both sides, x equals zero, you're done, that's the bad x. All right, so we took care of the uh, numerator up here, now we're gonna look at the bottommost denominator. So there's another bad x. So I'm setting zero equal to x squared minus four. Lots of ways to solve this, this is a quadratic equation meaning there could be zero, one, or two solutions. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and factor this because that's the way most people forget or, or don't remember that there is a, another way to solve this, which is factoring. So you can do x minus two, x plus two. And now we have zero product property. So either of these equals zero. And add two, we got two is x, or subtract two, negative two is x. Now remember, we were looking for bad x's, so all the x's on the screen that you're looking at are all ones you should not use. So bad values we got, if I write them in order, negative two, zero, two. All right, is that all you have to watch out for? Nope, that's all the dividing by zero we have to watch out for. There's still a square root x. We cannot have a negative square root. So let's go ahead and deal with that right now. So we got no negative square roots. So I'm going inside the square root. So what we see is square root x, we have to go inside and make sure that x is greater than zero, or greater than or equal to zero. I'm gonna put this in blue because we're actually looking for good x's here. All right, so this is the good x's. If I wrote the bad ones in red, you don't need to do this, but if I wrote the bad ones, that would be all the x's that are less than zero. These two statements are equivalent, they're just uh, complements. So you could either say the good ones are greater than zero or the bad ones are less than zero. So we're just gonna stick with the good ones here. All right, graph this on a number line. Got your number line, here is zero. X can be anything 
greater than zero. So it's gonna be zero to infinity, but we got the bad x values to worry about. I'm putting those in red. Zero is actually bad. Zero itself is bad. So let me go ahead and right here is you're gonna cut zero out, cut negative two out, and cut positive two out. So one thing you should be thinking, well, negative two is not even in our interval. Correct, so negative two won't actually change this. So now we're gonna modify our interval. We're not allowed to use zero, so it's open zero, open at two, we get this interval, and starting at two, going to infinity. So what do those look like when we write them down? Zero, two, comma, union two, infinity. So this is gonna be the domain for that first part. Okay, so that was a lot of work just to get that. Now we're gonna look at the domain of the composition. So this is P of F of X. I like to compose the inside part first. So I just swapped out F for the uh, expression. Now we're gonna P this X squared minus four and just remember that p of x function is one over square root x. So if you have trouble with function composition, just feed this a box and it's one over square root of the box. And all we need to do is take x squared minus four and put it inside the box right there. So that's one over square root of x squared minus four. Okay. So again, we have a possible division by zero and also our square root uh, needs to be positive. So I'll create some more space here. All right, this question is actually a little bit tricky and let's knock out both problems at the same time because they're both in the same expression. And if we look at it, if it's zero, the square root's okay, but the fraction's unhappy. If we're positive, the square root's okay and the fraction's okay. And of course it cannot be negative. So we're gonna accomplish both at the same time. So again, if I was just doing the square root, I would be allowed to equal zero, but I would also have to watch out the dividing by zero part. I'd be looking for the bad x values, meaning they're zero. So I'm gonna combine these together and just say, well, don't be zero, only positive. And then all we need to do is solve this inequality. All right, how do we solve quadratic inequalities? The shorter answer is very carefully. A few ways to do it. I'm gonna do it graphically. We've already factored this above. It factors x minus two, x plus two, which are conjugates. You can see it right there. So we have two x-intercepts, two and negative two. So we're gonna come back to that graph. So we're gonna go over negative two and two. What I'm doing, I'm gonna create a new function. We already have f and p, so I'll just let g of x equal x squared minus four, and we're gonna answer the question, when is zero less than g of x? So if I have a graph of g of x, this is a very easy question to answer. So this is a happy parabola with those two x-intercepts, what part is above the x-axis? What part is positive? Let's shade those parts in. We'll use a nice color. Pink is good. Let's go and shade them in. Not okay to equal zero. So we're skipping that and choosing the positive part. Skipping that and choosing the positive part. And then all we have to do is answer what x values did I just highlight? There's two parts, negative infinity comma, negative two. We're not allowed to use negative two. We're gonna start at two and go to positive infinity. Uh, if you really wanna get a little more accurate on the graph, that y value is negative four. You can see that because we shifted down four on the regular parabola graph. That's not actually important to answer this question. All right, I'm not gonna do the third part, but it's gonna be very similar function composition. You're just gonna change the order and you're always gonna go inside first, outside second.